just about an hour, week 11 of the 2020 NFL season will kick off with Thursday night football between Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks and Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. Two MVP candidates battling it out in Seattle. The Pro Bowl has officially opened up their voting process so fans can go to NFL.com and cast their official ballots, vote in their favorite players to make the 2020 Pro Bowl. However, a game that was intended to be played in Las Vegas will no longer happen. Instead, we'll explain what the NFL is doing with the 2020 Pro Bowl this season once we get to that segment. But what you guys have the opportunity to watch and listen to is me cast my vote live on this show as you guys are watching it so you guys can see who I feel like is deserving of making the 2020 Pro Bowl. The Miami Dolphins are the surprise team in the NFL. They're targeting the NFL playoffs and what was supposed to be a rebuild season for Brian Flores and company. How far along are they going to get in the NFL playoffs if they were to make it? That and much more, including Week 11 news and notes around the league in a brand new episode of Time to Football. Glad you guys are joining us here on this Thursday. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show. Lots to talk about here in a brand new episode. If you guys are watching on YouTube, chatting with us, premiering, uh, or watching this video as we premiere it on YouTube every Thursday night, how you guys doing? I'm going to be in the chat, joining you guys, ask any sort of questions, interact with me, uh, leave your thoughts and your opinions on any of the topics that we talk about on this show. Vice versa, if you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, how you guys doing? Thank you guys for listening to us on the audio experience. Make sure you guys rate and review this podcast on iTunes and jump over to YouTube. We have much more content on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, some questions you guys can ask me in the chat or some fantasy football questions. How, are, you, how are, you, are your fantasy football seasons going? I know that it's been a tough year for everyone. 2020 has been rough with COVID, with all the injuries to running backs and receivers. And I can tell you, I mentioned this on a podcast last week, and that was that my team suffered from the injury bug. I had Saquon Barkley. I put all my eggs in my basket with Saquon Barkley, and then once he got hurt, that kind of just... Uh, was just downhill from there. And, you know, I had Odell Beckham and Le'Veon Bell got fired as well. So it, it, it's been kind of rough. And I found some gems in Russell Wilson, who's playing tonight. I found some gems in Stephon Diggs, who, dra- who I drafted kind of later, uh, was a, a sleeper pick for sure. And then I ended up trading away Stephon Diggs earlier today because I had no depth at running back. I just have DeAndre Swift and that's it. That's really it. I really need a running back help. So uh, you know, I, I got rid of Stephon Diggs and I ended up getting James Conner, got Alan Lazard as well. Also, Corey Davis um, as well. Try to get some receivers to make up for the loss of Stephon Diggs so I can get an RB2 in, in James Conner. But it's been rough. It's been rough. I don't know how well that trade's going to work out, but, yeah, you know, I just got to take chances at this point. Otherwise, if I lose this week, I'm pretty much out of playoff contention. So uh, definitely interact with us and let us know how your fantasy football season is going. I would definitely love to. Uh, hear from you guys. Am I blinding you guys with this shirt? I know it's kind of kind of bright. I got the top button as well, um, but hopefully it's not blinding you guys. Lots of topics to talk about, like I mentioned, but first, as always, like we do every single week, we have to give out the most prestigious award on this show, and that is the Hungriest Player of the Week. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. Usually we give this award to a guy that's not well known, that's kind of under the radar, that is just making a name for themselves, just had one big game. It doesn't really matter about stats, but this week we had to give it to a guy that's kind of familiar in the NFL just because of his performance that he had last week against the Buffalo Bills. And if you didn't know about this guy, you definitely know about him now. And that is DeAndre Hopkins, the wide receiver on the Arizona Cardinals. Seven receptions, 127 yards, and a game-winning touchdown reception. The most important catch came when the Buffalo Bills were down. They threw to Stephon Diggs for a touchdown, 34 seconds remaining. Kyler Murray and company marched down the field, 11 seconds remain. Kyler Murray escapes the pocket, rolls out to his left. Beautiful throw into triple coverage. What are you doing, Kyler? It doesn't matter. You have DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best wide receivers in the league. Not according to Bill O'Brien, apparently. But DeAndre Hopkins showed up in triple coverage, Megatron-like, got that reception for a game-winning touchdown with two seconds left, leading the Cardinals to a victory 32-30 to against the Buffalo Bills. Hail Mary, DeAndre Hopkins. Game's on, game's on the line, and he just showed up. And 
That's why he is deserving of this award. So DeAndre Hopkins, congratulations. You and the Arizona Cardinals move on, and hopefully you guys will have the same success or are looking to have the same sort of success against a tough Seattle team here tonight. So that is why DeAndre Hopkins, you are the hungriest player of the week. Wow, I just got a notification on my iPad that uh, DeAndre Swift just suffered a concussion. <laughs> oh my gosh, my, fan, my fantasy team is just in shambles. I'm glad I made that trade for James Conner, though. Sucks to lose Stephon Diggs, but that's okay. Uh, week 11 of the 2020 NFL season is kicking off, like we mentioned here on Thursday Night Football. So you guys are joining us for this pregame show if you guys are watching this premiere live. But we want to get you caught up on news and notes going into week 11. Drew Brees is out for a couple weeks, at least two weeks. So that is on the optimistic side of things. Right now, the starter of the New Orleans Saints has yet to be determined, but it's looking like it's going to be Jameis Winston as the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints against the Atlanta Falcons. Taysom Hill is going to be working in there in the last two games when Brees was taken out, when they were up big against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, and he was taken out of the game because he suffered that shoulder injury. They kind of split their reps kind of evenly. Like Taysom Hill was that quarterback. Winston was that quarterback as well. Kind of sort of uh, right around the same amount of snap count while Winston had a little bit of an edge and attempted 10 passes. But uh, that'll be interesting and an interesting dynamic to see how long Brees will be out and how this team will operate with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston as their quarterbacks. Uh, Probably not an important note at all, but I think it's worth mentioning if you care. Uh, Justin Herbert. Got a got a haircut. He definitely got a haircut. And if you guys are interested in seeing uh, what what it looks like, the before and after, I, I, I believe we can we can show you guys. He, he he's definitely rocking the buzz cut now. Uh, looks like a, a, a his sophomore days in Oregon. So he got a haircut. That's that's one of the notes and news that I wanted to talk about. The Raiders defense is in a lot of trouble with this COVID nineteen reserve list. A lot of their starters have been placed on that list. So there's a lot of doubt about which starters will be able to play this Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs because they're definitely going to need their defenders against that high-powered offense. So what the Raiders did in response was bring in Vic Beasley, the former sack leader in 2016 for the Atlanta Falcons. They brought him in for a workout. Nothing has been uh, determined as of late. The 49ers acquired Tack McKinley off of waivers from, not the Atlanta Falcons, but the Cincinnati Bengals. That's right. Last week, the Atlanta Falcons released Tack McKinley, their former first-round pick. The Bengals picked him up off of waivers, and he failed a physical. So the San Francisco 49ers were like, hey, let's just give this guy a shot. Let's see if he can pass his physical with us. So let's see what happens at that point. Mike Tomlin, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, stated that he is aware of the run game woes, and he will fix the run game this week. So let's see what that means because I know that James James Conner has seen a dip in production. Has had 13 carries last week, 9 carries in the previous game. So his production is dropping down and this team is becoming more and more of a passing game, uh passing attack. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, so the Steelers offense, they're looking really good. So it, he's aware that the run game, there's no need for it, but according to him, they that could be fixed against a poor Jacksonville run defense. Christian McCaffrey is out yet again this week, and they stated that he was going to be out fairly early before they even practiced uh, this week. So Tuesday, they announced that he's going to be missing this week. Mike Davis will be the official starting running back on the depth chart with Curtis Samuel uh, working in there at the running back position as well. DeAndre Baker, the uh, former first-round pick for the New York Giants out of Georgia, was released earlier this season because of some uh, armed robbery charges uh, against him and Quentin Dunbar as well, which at this point, those charges have been dropped for DeAndre Baker because the attorney for the uh, three out of four alleged victims that he uh, affected, uh, they he was under some shady workings and uh, they just eventually dropped the case. So DeAndre ba- Baker is free to go, free to sign with the NFL team. And the Kansas City Chiefs are currently looking at DeAndre Baker as an option to sign to their practice squad. Matthew Stafford has a torn ligament in his thumb, but he is still expected to play. So he's been through uh, some injuries the last couple weeks, but it, it turns out that it's not that big of a deal. Had a concussion last week, was still able to play, got cleared. And now this week, torn ligament in his thumb, but he's still expected to play against the Carolina Panthers. Kyle Shanahan has stated that Jimmy Garoppolo is their starter next season. So 
moving forward, he has optimism that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to return this NFL season, is going to return late and be the starter. But not only that, he's going to be the starter moving forward as well, going into 2021, according to head coach Kyle Shanahan. And the last note that we wanted to mention, Drew Locke, Broncos quarterback, muscle strains and bruising in his uh, rib area. So he's now listed as week to week. So his doubt for uh, this Sunday's game against the Miami Dolphins uh, is definitely in question. So let's see what happens between uh, Drew Locke and the starting quarterback situation for the Denver Broncos. So moving on to something that I thought would be pretty fun to do on this episode, that is to show you who I am voting for the 2020 NFL Pro Bowl. Because I admit, I'm an NFL nerd. Confession time. I vote at least once a week for the Pro Bowl. Once the voting begins. I know it's a little bit overboard. Nobody else does that. But I just like to compare my votes from the beginning of when voting opens uh, compared to the end of the NFL season. So this is all done electronically on NFL.com. No mail-in ballots. No fraud happening or no runoffs. No, We're, we're going to know a clear winner once these votes are counted. No recounts. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and screen record my iPad. You guys are going to follow along as I cast my vote. I'm only going to do, uh, since a lot of you guys are fantasy football fans, I'll only do the positions that kind of pertain to fantasy football. Okay, so meaning like offensive linemen, I've already submitted like offensive linemen and, and defensive uh players as well, but I'm not going to go ahead and show that just because it would take too much time. Instead, I'm going to talk about the quarterbacks, running backs, uh, tight ends, maybe even get into kickers as well since they pertain to fantasy football. Uh, But I'm going to go ahead and screen record. You guys can follow along. But before I do that, I want to explain what is happening with the 2020 NFL Pro Bowl. It was supposed to be played in Las Vegas instead because of COVID-19 rules and the NFL protocols and Uh, the state of Nevada and their protocols as well, there's no game that's going to be happening, no physical game that's going to be happening this season. Instead, what they're doing is they're voting in these players and then they're going to play a game of Madden on Madden NFL 21, which has apparently got the worst reviews out of all video games or probably in video game history. One of the worst video games ever. Was it like a 0.8 that they got out of of 5 or out of 10? It was was pretty bad because it was just the... Same game uh, year after year, but they're going to be playing on Madden 21 and it's going to be YouTubers and Twitch streamers and celebrities and famous influencers. I I don't even know who that plays these games with these NFL pro bowlers. So uh, I'm going to be casting my ballot. I haven't done a lot of research on these offensive players on the defensive side. I did cast my votes before this video, but on the offensive side, I haven't done a lot of research. This is all based off of my head and my brain and who I feel like is deserving of making the NFL Pro Bowl. So you guys are going to follow along. Screen recording my iPad now. Oh, there you go. There you have it. Breaking news here on an episode of Time to Football. Panthers quarterback Teddy Bridgewater is unlikely to play against the Detroit Lions. So PJ Walker is in line to get that start for the Carolina Panthers against the Detroit Lions. So breaking news. Breaking news. You cannot get that anywhere else. Only in town of football. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay, so what am I doing? Vote now. And I don't believe this is based off of conference. So, you know, back in the day, you had to choose three quarterbacks from the AFC, three quarterbacks in the NFC. I believe this is just six quarterbacks in general. So I'm going to go ahead and show you who I'm going to vote for. So quarterbacks, this is organized by passing yards. I'm going to go ahead and select Josh Allen, well-deserving of it. Russell Wilson, MVP candidate. Tom Brady having a good year. Patrick Mahomes, only one interception. Aaron Rodgers playing lights out. Uh, Who else do we got? It's between Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, and Kyler Murray for me. Drew Brees, he's injured. He's going to be out for a few weeks, and I feel like he's not going to get that many votes because of it. His numbers are going to decline, so I'm not going to go ahead and waste my time and waste my vote on him. Ben Roethlisberger, For the 9-0 Pittsburgh Steelers, well-deserving of it. I want to vote him in. Kyler Murray, though, MVP candidate. Doing it a lot on the the ground as well. The the turnovers are a little bit bad, but he's making up for it. Because of his electrifying play, I'm going to go ahead and choose Kyler Murray over Ben Roethlisberger. But hey, if you guys are watching this video or listening to us on iTunes, interact with us on social media or in the YouTube comments. Who do you feel like I should have chosen at any point Instead of these players. So for the quarterbacks, 
I've got Kyler Murray, Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and Aaron Rodgers as my Pro Bowl quarterbacks. I, I mean, I feel like that's that's pretty fair right there. So uh, let's move on to running backs. Six players as well for this uh, for this position. Dalvin Cook, one of the candidates for Offensive Player of the Year. So is Derrick Henry. Ronald Jones is third in the NFL in rushing yards. It's probably because it, they haven't had a Week 13 bye yet. So that probably is the reason. Josh Jacobs, I know he comes in waves here and there, but uh, right now he's on a hot wave, on a hot streak. So I'm going to choose Josh Jacobs, eight touchdowns for the season. Kareem Hunt, James Robinson. Ah, oh, man, I like them. Kenyon Drake as well. He's been hurt, but he still has some pretty solid numbers. And Todd Gurley, nine touchdowns. Wow. Uh, you know what? I'm going to choose. Okay, let's first start off with who we know for sure, and that is Alvin Kamara. Without a doubt, he deserves to be in. Uh, Aaron Jones as well, even though he's hurt a couple games, he deserves to be in. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one more. One more, guys. This isn't live, so I can't hear your thoughts or see your comments, but let's channel that energy. Comment below, who do you guys feel like should be deserving of the last spot? Should it be James Robinson, Kareem Hunt, or Todd Gurley? I'm leaning between one of those three. And right now, the chat, even though I really can't see it right now because this was filmed prior to this being premiered, I feel like it's telling me, even though I am an Atlanta Falcons fan and I want to pick Todd Gurley, I feel like it's telling me James Robinson just because he's this undrafted rookie that just came out of nowhere and he's been carrying the load for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I'm going to go ahead and choose him. Almost 700 rushing yards for this season. Wide receivers, six players as well. Stephon Diggs, without a doubt, without question. Stephon Diggs leads the NFL in receptions and receiving yards. Having a great season. DeAndre Hopkins having a great season as well, killing it um, on that side of the ball. Keenan Allen, Justin, uh, Justin Herbert's favorite target. I would pick Robbie Anderson if it wasn't for that one touchdown. If it was for, if you had four or five, yeah, maybe. But instead, I'm going to choose the likes of Devontae Adams, who deserves to be in. I know Tyler Lockett has seven touchdowns, but so does DK Metcalf. Or he has eight touchdowns, DK Metcalf does. So I'm going to go ahead and choose DK Metcalf. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's between Tyler Lockett and Tyreek Hill for me. I would love to see two Seattle Seahawks get in there. That would be awesome to see. But those seven touchdowns, four of them came in just one game against the Arizona Cardinals. And I don't think he's going to repeat it again tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Tyreek Hill as the sixth uh, wide receiver. So I've got Diggs, Hopkins, Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf, and Tyreek Hill as my wide receivers. Can we agree? Can we agree? If not, hey, comment down below. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and pick a fullback. Why not? You know? Uh, I know Kyle Juszczyk is having a great season. CJ Ham as well is doing well uh, blocking for or Dalvin Cook. And uh, there's also Alex Ingold is working into the offense as well. But every single year, I choose my boy at fullback because he does a real, pretty good job blocking for Chris, uh, Christian McCaffrey. And that is Alex Arma, a guy that I actually grew up with in the same neighborhood in Decula, Georgia. I went to Decula Middle School and Decula High School. Alex Arma, my boy. I got you. Every single year, I'm going to vote for you for the Pro Bowl, and you're going to make it this NFL season. So, Alex Arma, you got my vote as the fullback. Uh, it says select up to six players per position, but full, fullback, I'm just voting one. It's Alex Arma. Tight ends. Let's move on. New position. Travis Kelsey, for sure. Darren Waller, for sure even though he has some up and downs here and there. TJ Hawkinson is really coming on strong, even though he lacks in receptions. He gets it or makes up for it in the red zone with those touchdowns. Rob Gronkowski, another guy that lacks in receptions because of the first half of the season, but since OJ Howard was out with a season-ending injury, he really stepped up. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Rob Gronkowski. It seems like for the last few weeks, he's been getting a touchdown every single game. Uh, Mark Andrews, another guy, even though all of his touchdowns are kind of sporadic and uh, he just hasn't been consistently good this season. Five touchdowns on the year, and this is about the whole entire season. I'm going to choose Mark Andrews. So I've got Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, uh, TJ Hawkinson, Rob Gronkowski, Mark Andrews, and one more. Red zone threat, Jimmy Graham. Congratulations. You had a resurrection uh, of a season in Chicago. So those are the offensive 
fantasy football Pro Bowl uh, players that I would select. Uh, let's go ahead and pick, since kickers are people too, a kicker. Because we're talking about fantasy football. Up to six players? It seems a little bit overboard, doesn't it? Ooh. Um, okay, Let, let's just calm down. We may just pick two. We may just pick four. Uh, if I had to really narrow it down to which kickers to pick for the season, Daniel Carlson of the Raiders would be one of my top options for a pull bowl spot. Uh, and then if I had to pick one more, it's between Young Way Koo or Will Lutz. I like Justin Tucker. I like Harrison Butker, but Harrison Butker has been missing way too many kicks. Uh, Justin Tucker just hasn't been getting as many opportunities as Justin C- Tucker usually gets. Instead, Young Waku, Jason Sanders as well, only has one miss on the season. Or Will Lutz. I'm going to choose my boy. I'm going to choose Young Waku. You got it, bro. You got it, bro. Two kickers. I'm just going to leave it at that. Two kickers that I submit. So, to recap everything, these are my offensive and I guess you could call it fantasy football pro bowlers uh, that I would select into the uh, 2021 Pro Bowl. Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Kyler Murray as my quarterbacks. For running backs, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, James Robinson, Aaron Jones, and Alvin Kamara as my running backs. My wide receivers, Stephon Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf, and Tyreek Hill. Uh, who else do we got? Uh, fullback, Alex Arma, of course. Tight ends, Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, TJ Hawkinson, Jimmy Graham, Mark Andrews, and Rob Gronkowski. And then my kickers are Daniel Carlson and Young Way Koo. Make my Pro Bowl roster for 2020 and like i said at any point if you disagree you don't agree with any of this comment leave your thoughts i would le- definitely love to hear who you would pick for the pro bowl so i'm gonna go ahead and submit that in just a bit after i select uh the rest of the special teams like i said i already uh, selected the defenders and uh, offensive linemen earlier before we started recording moving on to another topic that we have, we wanted to kind of talk about the Miami Dolphins because they are the surprise team of the NFL. Six and three, Brian Flores is a candidate to be the head coaching or, or to be the coach of the year. If it weren't for Mike Tomlin being undefeated, it would definitely, without a doubt, go to Brian Flores. They're currently six and three. The question is, will they make the NFL playoffs? With that extra wild card seed, with a seventh seed, Absolutely 100% they make the NFL playoffs. There are projections out there. CBSSports.com has a computer generator that calculates playoff projections. And they currently project that the Miami Dolphins have a 71.6% chance of making the NFL playoffs. So those those are some pretty good uh, odds for uh, the Miami Dolphins. Let's break it down a little bit further. They're 6-3. and Let's look at their upcoming schedule that they have for the season. Next up this Sunday, they face the Denver Broncos. They face the New York Jets after that. The Bengals, the Chiefs, the Patriots, the Raiders, and the Bills. Okay, so the Broncos and the Jets. If we're just basing off of, I know it's the NFL, anything can happen. Surprise team. Yeah, the Jets could get their first win against the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, it could happen. But if we're picking favorites in these games, like over-under and uh, who Vegas has winning these games, the Dolphins are expected to beat the Denver Broncos, so they move to 7-3. and three. Next game against the Jets. The Dolphins are expected to beat the Jets. 8-3 and three right there. Then the next games you have. The Chiefs, Patriots, Raiders, and Bills. Four games right there. They're 9-3. and three, Or they're 8-3. and three, Okay? You're telling me that out of those four games, if they win just, just two of them, maybe just one of them, they make the NFL playoffs. They do. The Patriots, they have a shot of beating them. The Chiefs, maybe they lose, okay? But they beat the Patriots. The Raiders, it's a coin toss. They beat the Raiders. They could go 10-5. and five. And then if they f- lose against the Bills, they go 10-6. and six. So th- this is a very, very realistic possibility for the Dolphins to make the NFL playoffs in what was supposed to be a rebuild year for the Dolphins. 
No one expected Ryan Fitzpatrick to play so well. No one expected Tua Tagovailoa to go into the game with Ryan Fitz, Fitzpatrick playing this well. No one expected Brian, Brian Flores to be this head coaching candidate for coach of the year. No one expected this. And no one expected this Dolphins defense to really step up and really take the reins and be one of the main reasons why they're doing so well. We want to talk a little bit about that Dolphins defense. Looking at the numbers, they currently rank 19th in the NFL in yards per game allowed. Not very good. 19th in rushing as well. 19th, 19th in passing as well. 19, 19, 19. All across the board. That's yards. Doesn't matter. But what what they're winning and what they're doing so well is in the turnover game. Okay, They're tied third in the NFL in total turnovers this season. This defense is playing lights out on the on the, the front seven. And in the secondary, even though they may give us some yards here and there, they got some interceptions here and there. Their defensive backs are pretty good players. And their front seven is not that bad as well, uh, with the emergence of Christian Wilkins in the second year especially. And they're fifth in the NFL and points per game allowed, and that is so huge. And that is a big reason. The turnovers are a big reason why they are fifth in the NFL and points per game allowed. Because if you can get a lot of turnovers, you can put your offense on the field for 30 minutes a game, which is how much they're averaging. They're 15th in the NFL and uh, time possession per game. You get this offense that time that they need to run out the clock and, and go down the field, just take their sweet time to score, get those turnovers, not allowing the opposing offense on the field that much. They're not going to score that much on you at that point. So fifth in the NFL and points per, uh, points per game allowed. And that's why they're doing so well. Their defense has really stepped up. But like we said, their offense can be efficient as well killing the clock and managing the clock as well. And all that does have to go back to Brian Flores, and you do have to give credit where it is deserved to Brian Flores. So this defense is one of the big reasons why they're doing so well. This offense is good enough. They're efficient, and they have a 71.6% chance of making the NFL playoffs. If they were to do that, according to CBSSports.com, they would get the sixth seed in the AFC playoff race over the Tennessee Titans, who would get the seventh seed. If they were to get the sixth seed, they would face the Buffalo Bills in the wild card. So that'd be two weeks in a row in week 17 and in the wild card that they would face the Buffalo Bills. So that'd be a triple header this season between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. But definitely leave your thoughts. If they were to make the NFL playoffs, which we just broke down the numbers and it seems like, hey, it's I'm going to go ahead and say, it. yeah, it's it's going to take a lot for the Dolphins not to make the playoffs. I'll just say that. If you feel like they're going to make the NFL playoffs, how far do you feel like they're going to go in this playoff race? Do you feel like that they're going to lose to the Buffalo Bills in the first round? It could. They could. I mean, it's a possibility. The Bills are playing out of their mind. That offense is doing really well. AFC East leaders and champions more than likely. But it's also a real, realistic possibility that the uh, the script could get flipped and that the Dolphins could win the AFC East as well. And that could change up the seating. So the Dolphins, great team. How far do you think that they're going to go? and the AFC playoff race. We want to go ahead and wrap up this podcast with our fantasy football questions that we answer every single week, a segment that we dedicate to you guys that ask your questions in the comment section uh, of those videos. Like I said, I try my best to respond to you guys in the comments, and I have been responding to a few guys here and there, uh, but I just, you can see me, or I have the best opportunity to respond to you guys while this podcast is premiering on Thursday night. So keep that in mind if you guys are watching this on a later date. Uh, but starting off with our first question, this is from Xenomex Gaming. Stafford, Burrow, Winston, Goff, Tugavailoa, Smith, or Cousins need to pick up one Josh Allen on a buy. A lot of uh, candidates that you could pick up uh, from here. Okay, so I want to say Burrow has the best opportunity to excel as far as how many times he's been passing per game, but he, he does face a Washington pass defense that is ranked top five, believe it or not, in the NFL and passing yards per game allowed. Uh, Stafford is he's a little a little bit sketch, even though it could be a good game with that defense against the Carolina Panthers. Could be a little bit sketch. I, I'm not a big fan of Jared Goff this this week. Took about Loa, I think he's just going to do average. Alex Smith, same thing. I, even though he faces the Bengals, I don't think he's going to be as efficient. Uh, we, we still haven't seen a lot of Alex Smith yet 
to determine that, okay, he has a good matchup. He's going to do well. He's still on the Washington football team offense that is struggling. So out of these guys, I know that you're probably going to roll your eyes, but I'm going to say Kirk Cousins. It's, it, it came down to Kirk Cousins or Joe Burrow. I'm going to lean towards Kirk Cousins against the Dallas Cowboys offense or Dallas Cowboys defense. And the reason I say that is because that defense is so bad that you can start almost anyone and they do well. I know there's some quarterbacks here and there that have bombed against the Dallas Cowboys, but that secondary is so bad, man. So bad, okay, that you, you, you can't trust them. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the Kirk Cousins ad for the week to replace Josh Allen would not be that bad. Next one from Veritas Agent. After last week and his bomb against Dallas, Carson Wentz should never make your start list again. Speaking of Dallas, let's talk about Carson Wentz. Okay, we've got to address this guy. There was a string of games, five straight straight games that he had 20, he was averaging 23 fantasy points a game. He looked great. He looked wonderful. And then I watched this game against the Dallas Cowboys uh, on Sunday Night Football. This is probably the game that he's watched, uh, talking about, not last week, but the, the week before that. Uh, this game against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, and he was just making boneheaded decisions, man. I don't know whether what, he was just off. I don't know whether he, uh, it was just t- two, three plays that just, I, I, I don't know what happened. But it, he did not look like the Carson Wentz that should be, that the, the Eagles drafted him to be. And I still think he's talented as heck. I just think that he's doing way too much to make up for it. And I think with Zach Ertz potentially being activated this week, this offense getting a little bit more comfortable with the weapons that they have. Jalen Rager now fitting into that offense, getting targets after targets after targets, especially in the red zone. Uh, Dallas Goddard coming into the NFL or coming into the lineup and uh, really showing up. I feel like Carson Wentz is just going to do a little bit better. There's, There's no way that he could do worse than he did. Uh, that he's been doing as of late. So keep your, keep your faith in Carson Wentz. I still like him this week in the matchup against Cleveland. I really do. I feel like uh, this game has the potential to be uh, somewhat high scoring, maybe in the 20s or 30s. Uh, so I, I like Carson Wentz's odds against the Cleveland Browns. Next one is from Seth Wilkins. I have Ebron and Mark Andrews. Lately, I've been starting Ebron. It's been working, but do I start Mark Andrews since Boyle went down? So once once Boyle went down, uh, Mark Andrews popped off in that game against New England. I, be, I believe he had seven receptions for uh, 61 yards, and that is very encouraging to see for the Baltimore Ravens tight end. For an offense that does not pass a lot, it's good to see that Mark Andrews is coming back into uh, the mold that he used to be. For Ebron, however, he's a little bit of the safer option. I still need a little bit more time to trust Mark Andrews. I have Eric Ebron as a must start this week just because of the matchup that he has against Jacksonville. And Ebron as well, I believe in the last two weeks, he's gotten six targets a game, which is pretty promising. And that's all you can ask for for a tight end that you pick up off the waivers, a low-end tight end that you can start. So for between Eric Ebron and Mark Andrews, I'm going to go with the safer option and I'm going to pick Eric Ebron. Airman Brown. What to do with Michael Thomas? Let me explain. Let me answer that question with what happened in my league, actually, that we play. Uh, Very competitive league. Very competitive. And there's this guy that had Justin Jefferson in my league. And someone else had Michael Thomas and was frustrated. Actually, he wanted to draft Alvin Kamara originally, but his computer froze. And it selected Michael Thomas, so he ended up with Michael Thomas. So if he had Alvin Kamara, much better record. But he's kind of, you know, he needs to fight for his playoff positioning, for his playoff hopes. This is his last week to win a game. Otherwise, he is out of playoff contention. So he's desperate. So he's like, hey, listen, Michael Thomas, name value. Let me trade him. Put something out on the group me in our fantasy football league. Said, Michael Thomas is available available for trade. Not even five minutes pass. I believe it's five or six minutes pass. See a trade. Michael Thomas for Justin Jefferson. Someone accepted. So... I, I still like Michael Thomas, and he still may go back to his Michael Thomas ways that he was in a couple years ago, uh, or last year even. James Winston at quarterback, we'll have to see. But uh, if you can get something out of him, if you need running back depth, trade away Michael Thomas. It would not hurt you. So uh, I would go ahead and get rid of him if you have the chance based off of name value. But if you're just very uh, low and or, or thin at wide receivers and in that position and that depth, 
just go ahead and just keep Michael Thomas. Um, this next one is from Bam Ramirez. Zeke or McKissick? This is an actual question. People are actually questioning now in PPR leagues, do I start Ezekiel Elliott or do I start J.D. McKissick? Because J.D. McKissick has not looked that bad in the last two weeks. Really hasn't. He's a good waiver wire ad that you can have uh, in your flex spot. For Ezekiel Elliott, it, things are not looking up for Zeke. It has been giving up carries and, and touches to the likes of Tony Pollard. But I still like Ezekiel Elliott because I'm going to go with the upside. I'm going to go with the guy that has the most potential to excel because of the, the talent level that he has. Just because he is the main guy, the, the the offense, the Cowboys offense is in shambles right now with that quarterback position. I know the re- wide receivers are good, but you may have to just rely on your run game to excel. And that's why I'm going to go with Ezekiel Elliott against a Minnesota team that has been uh, pretty, pretty banged up against the run game and has suffered against them as well. I'm going to go with uh, this couple more. Let's do a couple more. We've got Lawrence Mueller. Is Landry droppable? I'm not going to say droppable at this point, but I, I'm i not optimistic about the Cleveland Browns passing game. Odell Beckham would have been the only one that I would have optimism on. And Jarvis Landry, I thought he was going to be really good in, in PPR leagues, but this this team is leaning towards a run. Now that Nick Chubb is back and that, that he's healthy, the game script last week against the Houston Texans showed uh, was actually foreshadowing what the season is going to look like for the Cleveland Browns. And that's going to be run, 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 run down your throats with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. And that, because of that, I'm not big on Jarvis Landry on the season outlook. However, I wouldn't drop him just yet because I feel like he's still some, still pretty good depth uh, if the moment is right. If you're in deeper leagues, deeper meaning like 12 teams or more, uh, I would just keep Jarvis Landry just in case. All right, so this last question right here from J.W. Swam asks, in all caps, apparently he's angry, why is Taysom Hill listed as a sleeper tight end when he's a quarterback? Okay, so I mentioned this in a couple of videos. Hill right now in ESPN Fantasy Leagues, by the time of this recording, is listed as a tight end and a quarterback. Take advantage of that loophole. He's been a tight end all season long because people know that you can't start him at quarterback. He's only going to get maybe like five fancy points on a good day. But right now he's a tight end and a quarterback. Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill more than likely are going to work in and out on the quarterback snaps. Winston is probably going to get maybe 15, 20 passing attempts if game script last week and the the week before told us anything on how Sean Payton wants to split up these reps at their quarterback position with Drew Brees out. So Hill could meet, that could mean that he gets maybe three to five passing attempts. Okay. One, two, three receptions for the day, three to five rushing attempts. And he plays on special teams as well, sometimes here and there. So Hill is going to be used everywhere on offense, on special teams, you can go ahead and use that to your advantage to start Taysom Hill. Because guess what? If Hill is guaranteed, almost guaranteed, to get at least 10 to 12 touches this week against the Atlanta Falcons, why not start a tight end that is guaranteed to get that many touches? Because if you have any other tight end besides uh, Travis Kelsey, you know how thin this tight end position can be. So I would go ahead and start Taysom Hill at the tight end position, knowing that he's going to get 10 touches guaranteed instead of taking your chances with someone like a Jimmy Graham or like a Jared Cook or whoever that might put up a dud and only get two touches or three touches or four touches even. I would go ahead and put my faith in Taysom Hill this week as a big, big sleeper. But that's going to do it for this week of Time to Football. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like this video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with more weekly shows every Thursday around 7 or 7.30 right before the Thursday night game. This is a good pregame show so you guys can watch this instead of Fox's coverage, instead of watching a Terry Bradshaw trying to give away a million dollars even though I try to win that money every single week. Or instead of uh, watching NFL Network's coverage on that awkward tape delay that they have between Colleen Wolf and Steve Smith and Michael Irvin and just yelling back and forth with Joe Thomas looking at them being like, hey, what the, guy, what the heck are you guys talking about? You can watch with us and you can chat with us as well. Uh, I can't save you from Joe Buck and uh, Troy Aikman as they commentate the game. That's uh, 
Uh, I can't save you from that. You're going to have to deal with that. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video, watching this episode, listening to us on the podcast app. It is week 11 of the 2020 NFL season, and Adam Gates is still the head coach of the New York Jets. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>